So these are the Italian films in my Criterion collection. And um, I thought I had a lot more Italian films, but I guess I talked about a few of them in the first part. One, two, three. Yeah, I guess I talked about five or six in there, so I still have a good amount. But <clears throat> in that first video, I was talking about uh, Bill Hader's closet picks. <sighs> and I mentioned a movie that he recommended, but I didn't get it until <clears throat> I had already started collecting Criterion films. So here it is. Amar Cord. Or Amar Cord. Really good. Nice pretty cover art on here. So this is a Fellini film from 1973. And uh, it's a little over two hours long. And uh, <clears throat> the theme of this is uh, coming of age in fascist Italy and uh, dealing with sexuality and also uh, dealing with the reign of Mussolini and that sort of thing and it's a pretty it's kind of sexy film it, uh, it reminds me of this Woody Allen movie Radio Days uh, one scene in particular in that movie when they're uh, spying on a woman changing uh, <laughs> while they're while they're looking for like a German u-boat or something and so that's interesting because this is a uh, the Italian side of of the World War two fascism <clears throat> it's kind of funny too it's not just a, a serious uh, highbrow artsy film it's a uh, kind of funny um there's a scene where all the boys are in a car masturbating <laughs> i just did the ma masturbation gesture sorry um but yeah they're all masturbating and talking about different girls they're thinking about and one boy mentions a girl and then this other boy says no that's my girl <laughs> like <laughs> even though they weren't dating I'm, I'm butchering it, sorry. Um, but yeah, this is a really pretty, uh, colorful movie. This is when Fellini started making films in color. I wonder if this was his first color film. I don't know, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, listen to me talking about a beautiful movie having pretty colors. But two movies by Fellini in my initial video on this series were uh, Eight and a Half, of course, and um, La Dolce Vita. And those two movies, there's really only a few movies like it. And those were made by uh, Michelangelo Antonioni. It was a, a trilogy that he had. <clears throat> and I only have one film from that trilogy, La Ventura. This was made in 1960. It's a long movie, uh, two hours and 23 minutes. But what I mean by these movies being um, so unique, almost like a little film movement in themselves. So about five movies I'm talking about. Is their deliberate use of black and white, <clears throat> no apparent plot or genre, with existential themes, and they're Italian. So I've only seen this movie once. And those other movies all are uh, they're all pretty long and uh, intense and uh, heady, so. 
I need some some more time to really regard them and understand them deeply. But um, moving on, so I talked about the movie Salo or Salo. Not sure how to pronounce it. And that being directed by Pier Paolo Pasolini and how that movie got him killed and how that movie was based on a, a very famous book by the Marquis de Sade. Well, in the Criterion Collection, let's see if you can get a good... Can you read that, folks? I'm using autofocus, sorry. Well, this is a trilogy, a literary tri trilogy uh, that Pasolini did with uh, three very famous works of world literature. If you ever taken a world literature class, I have. And they talked about two of these three movies. I'm surprised they didn't talk about all of them. Those movies, those books made into movies are Arabian Nights. See if you can see the cover art. Actually, there's some nudity, so it's okay if you don't. The Canterbury Tales by Chaucer. And The Decameron, which I think is by Boccaccio. Yes, Giovanni Boccaccio wrote this. And uh, this one, uh, I think a... Uh, What's the term for it now? The uh, the politically correct term. <clears throat> sure, you could call me that if you wanted to. Um, what is it? Uh, developmentally de uh, delayed man. Uh, he starts hanging around a uh, wherever the nuns hang out, a nunnery, I guess you call it, and he uh, starts having a sexual relationship with a lot of the nuns, and. Um, this one's pretty funny. And so I think what all three of these have in common is that they're, um, you can see that, they're tales, uh, stories within a story. So, you know, the Canterbury Tales are uh, the Friar's Tale and uh, the, yeoman, the Yeoman's Tale. And that sort of thing, and um, <clears throat> yeah, these are these are uh, well, they're made by Pasolini, so they're going to be a little bit sexual, but they're also pretty funny movies. And um, comes with this little booklet. I'm not sure why there's an X on it. What Pasolini meant by that, but um, yeah, these movies are really cool, and the books are good too. I mean, they're classics, but um, <clears throat> I think those are the only. Oh no, there's one more Pasolini film in the Criterion Collection called Mama Roma, and uh, Anthony Bourdain recommended that movie. I still haven't seen it, but um. But yeah, those are the only Pasolini films in the Criterion Collection. But um, <clears throat> I think as of this recording, Amazon Prime Video still has a lot of other uh, Pasolini films that are more uh, ne Italian neorealist, like uh, La Strada, which is, I showed you that movie in the first video. And uh, Italian neorealist films are... They don't use actors. They use uh, like villagers from whatever village they're shooting at. And uh, one thing that stands out with them is how big the cast is. And people are talking over each other, that sort of thing. But you can't write to that sort of thing. You can't just reproduce that 
without being indignity with uh, the Italian neorealist movement. But, so Pasolini, that brings us to Pasolini's uh, protege, I guess you call him, apprentice, Bernardo Bertolucci. In this film, La, Cam La Camer Seca, The Grim Reaper. And, uh, I don't think I've seen this movie all the way through. <clears throat> I think Bertolucci has one or two other movies in the Criterion Collection. But, um, this one, it's the, uh, the old format. Uh, before they have the nice little spines on them, like you see here. You see a lot of this in my, does take up a lot of real estate in my DVD shelves, as you can clearly see. But anyways, um, Bertolucci, not my favorite filmmaker. Although I think the movies that should be in the Criterion Collection are not. We'll talk about that in another video. But so I've, I haven't actually seen this movie all the way through because I tried to watch it one day and um, I'm embarrassed to, to say that I fell asleep during it. You know, I mean, there was a time when I was watching about three films a day, mostly all in uh, foreign languages, so it's a lot of looking at the bottom of the screen. And even though I, I love those movies, it can be a bit demanding. So when things get too heady, <clears throat> A good place to turn is comedy. Can you see that, folks? It's called Divorce Italian Style. Let's see if you can get a, a good look at that cover art. I don't ever want to get divorced, but if I do, I'd want it to be Italian style. So, I don't know if you could see that very well, could you? It's hard to see my little LED screen on my camera. I mean, uh, that's why I wear these stupid glaciers. You know, they make my eyes look so big. So I can see how well exposed the shot is. No noise, I hope. A little out of focus in the background. So you can't see my pretty paintings. Not these two, of course. Those are Keith Herring's. But I painted this one, and I painted that one. Am I talking loud enough? <clears throat> so that's a little uh, into my life. But anyways, divorce Italian style. Let's talk about it. So, um, Vittorio De Sica directed The Bicycle Thieves. He has a famous movie called Marriage Italian Style with um, Sophia Loren and uh, the great Marcello Mastriani. And Marcello is in this movie. And this wasn't directed by Vittorio De Sica. This was directed by Pietro Germi or Pietro Germi. G-E-R-M-I. And this is a comedy, just like the other one. And uh, it's very funny the ways he tries to uh, divorce his wife, tries to kill her in many different ways. If you can see, come on, Dolly, come on. Is in focus a little bit? That's a knife. Looks like that's a rocket ship, a gun. Uh, poison. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's very out of focus, but... Yeah, he tries to kill her. And, um... But it's, it's a funny movie, and uh, I don't want to give away the ending. You should watch it. But one thing that stands out to me with this one is just how thick the DVD case is. I mean... 
It's about twice as big as a regular one. Comes with two DVDs and a booklet, which I think they could fit in a regular DVD case, don't you? So that's it <coughs> with the Italian films, other than the ones that uh, were in the first video. Take a look at them. See if I can get a. Okay, so <clears throat> that's the end of this one. We're gonna move on to what's next: German and Eastern European films.